who ships are berthed in London River and on the Medway have new cause to thank the missions to seamen. For men who are moored a long way from facilities ashore, it's providing a new recreation vessel. Life in these waters will be much more enjoyable as a result. Well upstream at Westminster Pier lay the motor vessel John Ashley, built by Thornycrofts, costing 31000 And the Duke of Edinburgh, president of the missions to seamen, went aboard to receive the little ship on behalf of the mission. After his acceptance speech, the John Ashley was dedicated in a service performed by the Bishop of London. Then, with the Duke at the wheel, the vessel headed downstream to begin its work. The recreation room boasts a cinematograph, plenty of books and TV. There's an almost homely atmosphere. The chapel, where the Reverend Frederick Late will hold services, is a reminder that John Ashley, after whom the boat is named, was a parson himself. His little son asked him how sailors in the Bristol Channel could go to church. That was 123 years ago. Ashley resolved to give up his living and devote himself to work among seamen. Sailors today bless the name John Ashley. A very, very warm welcome to our annual Sea Sunday service. I'm speaking to you from St. Michael Paternoster Royal, especially important because this is sadly the last year in which this church will be the headquarters of the mission. And of course, this building's played an enormously important part in our life over so many years. So a warm welcome. Because we're online, of course, it's an opportunity for people from our teams all over the world to participate. And that is a very rich thing. And I hope um, you'll benefit from that as so many did last year. And I want to say a huge thank you as we open to our teams everywhere. This last few months have been so incredibly challenging for them and for the seafarers we serve. And I am so proud of what so many have been able to do in support of seafarers during that period. And I hope that this service will reflect something of that. Welcome to you all and enjoy. reading from the Gospel according to Mark chapter 4, beginning to read at verse 35. That day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious call came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. 
Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasians. Here ends the reading. On this Sea Sunday, it is a good opportunity for us all to remember the human cost of shipping. Throughout this pandemic, we have heard stories of huge issues of seafarers being denied shortly. But there's also been the hidden, unseen aspects where seafarers have been suffering throughout this pandemic. Earlier this year, I supported one seafarer who was expecting the birth of his daughter and I had journeyed with him through the birth, seeing scans, seeing pictures of the scans. We helped buy him some baby clothes. Sadly, two days after she was born, his daughter died. This seafarer missed the birth of his child and he also missed the funeral. His shipping company and his captain did everything they could to get him home. But the reality was, that he would still have to undergo 14 days of quarantine and he would still miss the funeral and for him the reality was that he and his family needed the money and because of the Covid issues he didn't know when the next lineup would be and so we visited him, we sat with him and we cried with him as he mourned the loss of his daughter. These are the hidden aspects of the pandemic. This is the hidden plight of seafarers during these times of COVID. And so on this Sea Sunday, I ask you to pray for all seafarers. Pray for those big issues, those big news items that you see in the papers and on the TV. But please pray also for those hidden aspects. And please always remember that there is a human cost to ship. Hi, my name is George from Myanmar, Gantry Manager of the Mission to Seafarers Yango. Myanmar is one of the countries located in Southeast Asia. The Mission to Seafarers Yango is part of a family of global Mission to Seafarers. Today I'm going to introduce about our work and mission here in Myanmar. The Mission to Seafarers Yango is formed with 13 committee members and legally register in Yangon governmental body. The mission to seafarers Yangon is providing service and support for seafarers and their family, including counseling, medical advice, legal advice, and send vocational training, regardless of rank, nationality, and gender. We have two main components for caring of seafarers here in Myanmar. The first one is taking care of foreign seafarers and the second one is supporting of local seafarers and their family. For caring of foreign seafarers, we are taking regular ship visiting and providing pastoral care to seafarers for those arriving to MITT port and some other ports along the Yango River. The MITT port is located at 25 km from Yango city and seafarers arriving on that ports are facing difficulty to access a shoe. In our center, we are providing mini library, some light games, and free Wi-Fi access for all seafarers. Myanmar is labor supplying country and supporting of local seafarers and their family are vital. In our center, we are providing free of charge English classes for local seafarers and providing onboard job knowledge sharing for local seafarers. Now, today, seafarers are require computer knowledge key, and in our center, we are providing free basic computer courses for local seafarers. Seafarers' family are encouraging not solely rely financially on seafarers, and not to collapse the whole family if something happened to seafarers. 
In order to achieve this, seafarers family are providing sand vocational training such as design and sewing course for seafarers family and flower arrangement course for seafarers family. The mission to seafarers Yango is occasionally provided basis necessary for to over 60 years of age retire seafarers. In conclusion, over 90% of trade what we daily basis needs are carrying through from sea. Caring and looking after for the seafarers is actually looking after to our whole planet and all human beings living on it. Thank you so much. Good day everyone. I'm Charles Fori Fontamillas from Ojong Romblon and a member of MTS Romblon chapter. I'm an Electrotechnical Officer from CF Sharp Crewing Management Incorporated. Happy Seafarers Day to all, and I would like to share you a poem entitled, We Are Seafarer. We sailed the vast ocean through its high and low, danced through ship's motion from the stern to its bow, to provide goods and services to all consumers of the world, a seafarer's sacrifice that to you is being unfolded. Eat, work, then sleep. The usual routine we do on board. We sing, dance, and laugh. The only happiness we can afford. Waiting for next port. Taking chances to communicate with our family. With all the time seeking guidance and protection from the Lord Almighty. When duty calls, we turn the day into night and night into day. For how long, nobody can say. We are on our own since we embarked on day one and hide the feeling of loneliness as much as we can. We eat what's been cooked and no reason to be picky. We clean our cabin with no excuses for it to be messy. We washed our clothes after a hard day's job, self-medication with warm bath and ointments rub. Every day is Monday with no chances of surely for relaxation, hoping for everything be back to normal after vaccination. For even though we are expected to be with our family during vacation, most of the days are wasted because of this quarantine and hotel isolation. Seafaring career has never been easy and it's getting bad. If we have enough savings and investment, quitting will be glad. But reality check, these are not applicable to the majority because most can say no to the needs of the extended family. Life's challenges come and go with us stronger than before. Determined to finish the contract with our family and God in our core, the world is changing but we keep on sailing. Stand proud for them to see. We are the unsung heroes, backliners, and brave warriors of the sea. We are Seafair Abuhay. It's Moses Muli's job to look after the crews of abandoned ships. The only way to meet them is by climbing on board since they can't leave the ship. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> the ship's crew haven't been paid since months before it was abandoned. The port city of Mombasa is just there. It's only about a kilometer away, so close, but yet so far for the sailors stuck on board. Covid restrictions and immigration rules mean they can't go on the land. Plus, if they abandon the ship, they risk losing the wages that they're owed, in some cases up to three years. And so they're confined within the decks of the ship, which they say have come to feel like a prison. The crew here has depended on food and water from a charity called Mission to Seafarers, brought regularly by Moses. He says ship's owners try to push abandoned crews to their limit. They want to, to, to cause a crisis to the seafarer. They want the seafarers to get tired and leave the ship so that they don't pay the salary arrears. Some of the crew, their wives left them because life has to continue. I would like to term it as a modern slavery. The crew of MV Janan hope their ordeal will soon be over. A court in Mombasa has ordered the ship to be sold. An auction took place last week. You stay for nothing is no good. But now with some light. 
some light, waiting uh, order from the court, we take money. We say our goodbyes and leave the crew waiting and hoping that whoever won the auction will pay up. And if that happens, they'll soon be leaving too and finally flying home. But thousands more like them around the world are still going nowhere. There have been a lot of delays. Filing the case has taken quite some time. And also the court process, the selling of the ship because of the effects of COVID-19 was not easy. But we are happy to confirm that the money has already been deposited in the court and very soon the seafarers will be paid. Jesus said to them, let us go across to the other side. Imagine the scene right at the start of Jesus' ministry. There he is, an itinerant preacher on the north bank of the Sea of Galilee. He started to make a name for himself, healing a man on the Sabbath, teaching him parables about the seed and the sower, calling 12 disciples to be part of a new community, setting fellowship with them above the kinship of mother and brother. And the crowds respond. They turn out in their thousands, so many, that Jesus has to sit in a boat offshore just so that he doesn't get swamped by the number of people who want to hear him. All day long, he sat there teaching. And as evening falls, he calls out, let us go across to the other side. Well, if you've ever been to the Sea of Galilee, you'll know that the other side is large by inland lakes, but not anything like so far as a standard of modern day seafarers. Even at most 13 kilometers across, well, that would seem a challenge when the sudden storms rolled off Mount Hermon, something every fisherman there learnt to fear. But going to the other side is what seafarers do day in, day out, week in, week out, crisscrossing the globe to carry the goods and services which keep the global economy going. In an island nation like this in the United Kingdom, 95% of our trade is seaborne and nearly half of all of our food is imported. We're dependent on those who go down to the sea in ships, those men and women who go to the other side of the world, and to you we owe a huge debt of thanks. And these seafarers are not the only ones who go to the other side. The mission to seafarers works in over 200 ports worldwide, providing help and support to those 1.5 million crew men and women who face danger every day to keep our global economy afloat. Those chaplains and many of their colleagues have followed Jesus' call to go to the other side. The American president, John F. Kennedy, was given a small bronze plaque which he kept on his desk in the Oval Office. Those of you who followed the TV series, The West Wing, will have seen it on the desk of the fictional President Jed Bartlett. President Kennedy was given the plaque by Admiral Hyman Rickover, who gave one to all new Navy submarine captains. It's the old Breton prayer. O oh God, thy sea is so great and my boat is so small. When we are called to go to the other side, whether it's to cross over the Galilee in a fishing boat or to reverse the globe in a bulk carrier or on a container ship, Jesus, who is Lord of all creation, promises to be with us and when the storms come, and come they will, he will rebuke the wind and say to the sea of our troubled hearts, Peace, be still. May God bless you. So I'm here in St Michael Paternoster Royal with Bill Christensen, who was um, general, actually, he was Secretary General Bill from yes. 2001 to 2009. And we're also going to be hearing from 
um, Bishop Bill Down, who was General Secretary from 1976 to 1990. There's Bill, and there's you, and I'm down here at the tail end where I, where I belong. So, um, uh, and uh, it's, it's great to be with you, Bill, and, um, and we are, of course, the three remaining living Secretary Generals, which is quite sad, but it's a reality. And it's great to be here. Thank you, Andrew, for the invite. Bill, tell us a little bit about, about this building, uh, what it's meant to you, and a little bit about your mission to Seafarer's story. Yes. The first impression was looking in at this amazing church with those windows, particularly in the morning when I came in with the sunlight against them, the Hayward windows, they are fantastic. I was reminded later by Canon, um, Ken Good who also worked in central office, who used to refer to that window on the right <laughs> as the first ever recorded game of billiards. <laughs> and there you can see with the spear and the fruit looking very much like a billiard game. So I'd never forgotten that. The other thing about this building was that annually, we had an annual service where it was filled with volunteers, very important part of the mission to see friends, chaplains from the various, particularly home ports, and also the presence of, on most occasions, our president, Her Royal Highness, the Princess Royal. Following the service, we would go around to one of the livery companies, the Wishful um, Company of Tallow Chandlers, for a snack lunch. And again, the role of the president, meeting volunteers and spending time with them, chatting about various things, before returning here when she always chaired the annual general meeting. Very special moments. It's absolutely great to be here with Bishop Bill Down. It's a sad time that we're, we're going to be leaving St Michael Paternoster Royal, but an exciting time for us as well. And I wondered if you could just tell us a little bit about, about St Michael Paternoster Royal, your first experience of it, and what it meant to you over those numbers of years that you were based there. In 1968, we got this invitation to go down to London for the opening of the new missions to seamen offices, which were going to be in St. Michael Paternoster Royal. And I went down there and I was so pleased that it was going to be based in a church that it made our position in the Anglican Communion really clear. And the Duke of Edinburgh came for the service of rehallowing of the church and its dedication. And uh, it was a superb church when you think that it was a hundred yards from the Thames. It was seven minutes walk from St Paul's Cathedral, right in the square mile of the city, in the middle of the shipping offices and the ship related offices and I came back feeling really excited about it and um, I realised once I started working there some years later that uh, some of the so-called advantages were somewhat more difficult to work with, notably working up a tower <laughs> but um, it, we've, we've been there for 50 odd years now and the situation has changed with um, different ways of communication. Thank you so much, Bill. That's absolutely brilliant. And uh, thank you so much for giving us your time. Well, hi, and uh, it's great to be with you. Uh, my name is uh, Andy Bowerman, and I serve the mission to seafarers across the Middle East and South Asia. And I'm uh, here at the shores of the Mediterranean uh, to tell you just a little bit about some of the new work that we've begun in the past year, and uh, some of the work we'd love to begin uh, in the year ahead. 
Uh, here across uh, the Mediterranean, we've been really fortunate to place three new chaplains, uh, two chaplains in Egypt and one in Israel. Uh, we commissioned uh, Canon Hanny and Dean David uh, back in March. And thanks to God's wonderful providence, the day after we'd commissioned them, uh, we were invited to send a team uh, to visit the crew of the Ever Given. Uh, you remember that ship, uh, the one that was uh, stuck for a brief time uh, in the Suez Canal. It was a real sign of God's blessing upon the work and an opportunity for that fledgling team to learn something of the work of a ship visitor. And then further across the Mediterranean, as I say, we've placed uh, Father Kevin Cable uh, in Jaffa. And uh, he has an intention of opening up and serving in the ports of Haifa and Ashdod. It's an exciting new adventure for us. We're partnering with the Church Mission Society as well as the Diocese of Jerusalem. And after months of struggles and difficulties with visas and uh, delays because of the coronavirus, uh, Kevin and his wife Jen uh, arrived into Jaffa just last month. And so he's already been through his initial training and we're now seeking ways that he might begin to engage with the port as he serves with us alongside the Church Mission Society where he'll be reopening uh, the Church of St. Peter's in Jaffa for the first time since 1947. Then looking into the future, into the, the year ahead, we have other exciting potential developments which we'd love you to partner with us in. Uh, we've already been rethinking about opening our port in Aden in Yemen. You'll have seen the terrible stories coming out of Yemen over the past few years. But we're wondering if now is the time to think about recommitting our services uh, into that port, a port which has been struggling uh, for the past five years, which has missed out on so many contracts and opportunities and yet where uh, so many seafarers still find themselves in need of welfare and support. And we're also seeking wisdom. Wisdom in how we should respond to an invitation to open up work within Saudi Arabia. Uh, we have an invitation from uh, port authorities around Jeddah on the other side of the Suez Canal to see if we can't serve and work there. Uh, but also in Dammam, bordering on with Bahrain. Uh, for us this has been a really interesting period. Uh, the Mishnah Seafarers were first in Port Said and Aden in 1885. Somehow we're reopening or reimagining old things. Uh, but also some brand new opportunities. Uh, we've never served in Israel. We've never had anybody serve in a country quite like Saudi Arabia. And so we're excited for what the future has to hold as we seek to play our part to continue to support seafarers, to show them God's love and mercy in the often difficult circumstances of their lives. And we thank you for sailing with us on that journey. Amen.
I'm Tom, project manager of We Care. Thank you for your support in the We Care program. We have now reached over 6,000 seafarers and their families and provided them a space to discuss and share their experiences of mental health and well being. We define well being as an ability to maintain an emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual balance. Our courses encourage seafarers to define what well being means to them and explores ways to achieve a balance in their lives. We identified two key triggers that form a barrier of well being. The first is miscommunication in long distance relationships. The second is financial concerns. Your support has enabled us to grow the We Care program to provide seafarers and their families with exceptional resources, whether through e learning or mental health resources on board and community workshops at home. We've been able to promote well being of seafarers worldwide. Thank you. The Seafarers Happiness Index gives seafarers around the world the chance to share how they feel about life at sea. It asks 10 key questions, covering all aspects of life on ship, from food and wages to shore leave and contact with family. Every quarter, we publish the results so the industry knows what's working and what needs to be changed. The latest reports have seen responses generated against the backdrop of the COVID-19 pandemic with the issues surrounding crew changeovers and seafarer key worker status coming to the fore. While seafarers are vital to the global economy, the profession sadly remains largely invisible. The Seafarers Happiness Index helps ensure that the voices of the thousands of men and women working at sea are heard and encourages the industry to bring about positive changes. So good day to all of you around the world. Our text today begins by Jesus suggesting to his disciples that they get in a boat and travel to the other side of a lake. Perhaps some listening will know about taking a journey on a boat. You may have looked forward to that journey because it meant relaxation, time together with friends and families. For seafarers listening today, your idea of a journey on a boat may not always be filled with thoughts of joy and peace. A journey by boat for you means hard work, danger, and a time away from family and friends. Journeys from one place to another can therefore bring mixed thoughts and feelings. They can mean sadness, anxiety, fear or joy, excitement and happiness. The journey in this story certainly has an element of fear and anxiety. The boat hits a storm and almost sinks. Jesus stands up and brings peace. He reminds his disciples that despite what they see and what they feel, that in fact he is always around, ready to step in, ready to bring change, ready to bring peace. Today this well-known story reminds us again that amid the storms of life, such as COVID, loss of life, sickness, loss of income, and for seafarers months away from family and friends, Jesus is around and will respond to our call when we ask him for help. There's also a challenge for us to follow Christ's example in the middle of life storms. We too need to go to the other side. We too need to journey with others in life storms. The chaplains, ship visitors, volunteers and census staff have made a commitment to do just that. During the time of the pandemic, going to the other side has been for many of them complicated. An example of this is a fishing vessel that sunk in Baira in Mozambique. The crew was stranded with limited food and water and at stages were living alongside the sunken vessel on the quayside. The chaplaincy team who heard about this story could not travel to Baira because of the COVID restrictions. But through different social media platforms, they managed to contact the crew, shipping agents, and eventually even the Philippines Embassy, who assisted in getting the crew home. Sometimes, however, our going to the other side is simply acts of kindness. The team in Valfus Bay supplied a crew with fried chicken and pizza 
as they had had not shore leave for months and were just so wanting to have some special treat. So today we pray for seafarers who travel by boat to the other side of the world to bring us much needed supplies. We pray for the staff, ministry and volunteers who will travel to the other side to bring God's support and care and kindness to seafarers and their families. Amen. God of departure, every journey begins with a new direction. Every vessel sailing on the oceans and seas you created are sailing over to the other side. We pray for each ship and every journey, for all who sail on board each vessel. No matter the destination or reason, we pray for your guidance and direction, focus and energy, strength and courage to meet the demands of the journey. We pray for your confidence to fill each mind and for your hope to fill each heart. God of the watch, you care for every single life, every drop of water, every blade of grass, every bird in the air, and every hair on our heads. There is no moment waking or sleeping when you are not there with us. When the waves toss the ships in the dark of the night, you are there to guide and strengthen. When our fear like the waves threatens to swamp our emotions and our lives, you are there holding us close. Help us to remember that we can never be lost, even in death, because you have given us eternal life in Jesus Christ. Faithful God, when fear caused our faith in you to flee, you rebuke the wind and waves, not us. And you remind us, be still and know that I am God. While we cannot control the elements, we can rely on our faith in you to help us control our emotions steer the right path and wait for you. Give us strength to hold on in the storm at sea and in our life. Remind us as well that you have promised never leave us even to the end of time. Help us to rest in the comfort and safety of your love. He went across the lake to the region of Gerasenes. God of arrival, as we find our way into a safe harbor, at the end of our journey, we remember that our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Thank you for guiding us safely home. Thank you for watching over our loved ones as you have watched over each of us. Keep us ever and always mindful that in the joy of arrival, we come to the end of one journey and the beginning of the next. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. May God the Father, creator of heaven and earth, bring you and your shipmates to a safe haven. May God the Son, our Redeemer and Saviour, Calm the wind and the sea, as he did for his disciples. May God, the Holy Spirit, our comforter and guide, enable you to accomplish the work you are called to do. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be upon you and those whom you love and serve, this seafarer Sunday and always. Amen. It's nice to have been given the opportunity to, for a moment, to thank seafarers for all they do for us, for the travel around the world, the cargoes they bring, the foods, the provisions that they give for us, in many times great difficulties, dangers as well, loneliness as well, and all problems that are associated with being away from their loved ones. So they often sacrifice so much for us, 
And it is my great joy, great, great joy and privilege to say to all seafarers a hearty thank you. Thank you, seafarers. Thank you. Thank you, seafarers. Thank you very much, dear Kumbhavyam. We would like to say thank you. Thank you. Diochenbar, thank you. Diochenbar. On behalf of all of us at St. John's Anglican Church in Ghent, we want to say thank you to all the seafarers. God bless. Thank, thank you, seafarers. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. And so to seafarers and their families everywhere, from all of us at the Mission to Seafarers and far beyond, it's a huge, huge thank you. The challenges of these last months over a year now have been incredible and you have been heroic. We thank you so, so much. Thank you. Yeah.